the Boya BY-M1 Lavalier Microphone. The Boya BY-M1 Lavalier Microphone. Now be quiet, I'm recording. Hi everyone, so this is the Boya BY-M1 Lavalier Microphone. And this is our secret sauce that will be... It's a free secret sauce. The free secret sauce we'll be adding to this microphone. So by the end of this video, you should be able to make this microphone or any other microphone for that matter sound really, really good. So the Booyah BY-M1 Lavalier microphone is an affordable microphone and I use it in my YouTube videos all the time. But straight out of the box, it has some room for improvement. And it's that room we're going to fill with our secret sauce, the PT EQX from Ignition Amps. Now this is a super cool software emulation of a vintage tube EQ from the 1950s. And just by looking at it, you can tell that it's not a normal boring EQ like you used to. No, this one got some mojo. And you can use this plugin in any editing software that supports either VST or AU plugins if you're on Mac. And if your editing software don't support these types of plugins, stick around because later on I'll show you how you can get this working anyway. Sound good? So in Premiere Pro, if you're working with multiple clips and takes and you do cuts and everything, instead of having to add the effect to each and every take and clip, by applying it to just the entire audio track, you will have the effect on everything as long as it's being placed on that specific track. So let's head over to the audio track mixer and click this one to expand and let's hit one of those and down to VST. Ignite Amps PTEQX. And let's do double click to bring it up. So I won't dive deep into this. I will do a more in-depth video later on if you guys want me to. So this section over here is the mid-range section. This area here have low frequencies, as you can tell, and also high frequencies. Down here we got the low cut and the high cut. And basically if you set this to, I don't know, 50, uh, the plugin will remove everything below 50 hertz. So this could be good if there's some weird rumbling noise in the background or something. And same thing here, but the opposite. If you set this to 15 or 12 kilohertz, then it will remove everything above that frequency. So let's head back up here. And we got a couple of different sections here. So this section here, these two are peak or boost. So you can select a frequency on this knob here and then you can boost that frequency with this knob. Same thing here, but we got the dip section. So we remove instead of boosting. And here we got another one, also a peak or boost, ranging from 1500 to 5000. Uh, so let's start with uh, this section and we'll go through these two today. But first, let's listen to the uh, track we'll be working on. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits and a biscuit mixer. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits and a biscuit mixer. Very well. I know f and by experience that 500 hertz is usually somewhat of a problem area. So let's uh, see if we can hit those with the 500 and let's dial this up to four to begin with. And let's listen. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits and a biscuit mixer. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits and a biscuit mixer. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits and a biscuit mixer. Yeah, that wasn't super difficult, was it? Uh, so what else could we do? Well, it's still kind of Thin and we could definitely add some more uh, punch and, and uh, bass to it. So let's head down to the low frequency section here. I usually boost somewhere around 100 or 150 hertz. It kind of depends, but let's start with 100 hertz. And as we did before, let's take this one, the boost, bring it up to four and let's have a listen. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits and a biscuit mixer. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits and a biscuit mixer. A Pretty darn good, right? A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits and a biscuit mixer. If you listen to the uh, low end, it's somewhat muddy. So let's see if we can clean that up by using 
the attenuation knob over here and just dial it in ever so slightly. So let's bring it to somewhere around here maybe and let's have a listen. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits and a biscuit mixer. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits and a biscuit mixer. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits and a biscuit mixer. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits and a biscuit mixer. A let's add some presence. So let's put this one, the high frequency over here at around five. And let's grab the boost knob and bring that up to one out four for this one as well. And let's have a listen. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits and a biscuit mixer. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits and a biscuit mixer. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits and a biscuit mixer. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits and a biscuit mixer. A couple of other handy features is number one, presets. So whenever you dial in your audio and you think it sounds good, go ahead and make a preset out of that. Second one, sometimes when you record audio in a camera or an external recorder, you have a stereo track instead of a mono. And that means that sometimes the voice can be coming from the left side or right side. And in my opinion, you should have your audio, your dialogue track as a mono track in the middle of the screen. And this thing is very easy to solve. Just go down here and look at this button, flick it to mono and voila. Now your audio should be coming from the middle of the frame. In the description, I've added a download link where you can find both the PC and the Mac version. So all you got to do is download that onto your computer, unzip it, and then you copy the files into your VST or AU plugin folder on your computer. And if there's no such folder, then just create one and add them there. And in your editing software, just point to that directory and you should be good to go. If you're using a software that doesn't support VST or AU plugins like this, what you could do is download Audacity. Audacity is a free audio editing software and it's available for both Mac and PC. So what you do is when you're done with your edit, export the audio files, open it in Audacity, apply the plugin and do all your settings and tweaks in there, then save it and replace the original audio file in your video editor and you should be good to go. There's one more little secret just like this that I want to share with you guys in an upcoming video. So please keep an eye on my channel either by subscribing or just check back frequently so you don't miss out. Otherwise, that's it for now. Let me know in the comment section how this plugin works out for you guys or if there's any problems, maybe I can help. Okay, see you guys in the next one. Bye.